Hello, everybody, and welcome to the ninth episode of The Best Match Ever. This is a series where we are ranking every single pro wrestling match to determine which is the best ever. Uh, this is episode number nine, and we're going to be t looking at the Chamber of Horrors match. Uh, this match happened in October 27th, 1991 in WCW, which is also available on the WWE Network. Ding. Mm. Ding. And uh, usually we would go into the background of this match, but uh, I don't, I don't think there is a background for this match. I think some, my my theory is some TV executive just tripped balls on LSD one day and came up with this match. Yeah, there were loose threads. Like I think uh, Cactus Jack and Sting were feuding at some point, so that might have been the thing that ignited it. Was you know they're feuding, so they're gonna get teams together to match. I don't actually know either. Yeah, I don't know. someone was on something when they thought of this match, yes. and whatever it was, it must have been really bad. Something. It, whatever it was, I'm happy they were on it because this match is awesome. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a very this, this match is so good. This is pro wrestling condensed into its purest form. <laughs> we 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 have to just rip the band aid off and just go right into this match. Let's talk about the match. All right, all right. Before before anybody even comes out. Uh, we need to talk about the stage setup. Um, I I have here the stage setup is it looks like a school play, with the main backdrop looking like it was made by that guy that does shitty watercolors on Reddit. <laughs> this isn't even like the best. This isn't even the best Tombstone WCW set I've seen. They've had yeah. other Halloween Havocs better than this one. And then yeah. they came after. This was 1991. Keep in mind. So okay. the Halloween Havoc concept is. Kind of fresh. They had time yeah. to improve their tombstone game. And they had money that they needed to use to produce this cage and these props for this match. So couldn't put it all into the set. That's okay. It still looks pretty cool. If I saw this set um, at a haunted house, I'd think, eh, it's mid-tier. It's not great. But um, definitely put some effort into it. I liked it. The rules are there are two teams of four. Pretty simple. The object is to put a member of the opposing team in the chair of torture... And pull the fatal lever. And then, like, this is a direct quote, even with, like, the odd stutter in it. And so, like, you pull the fatal pull the fatal lever, which will render, pause, one of the teammates, pause, helpless. The fatal lever, which will render one of the teammates helpless. And now the participants. So here's, here's the thing about this match. This match is goofy as hell. But this match, like outside of El Gigante, who is uh, only known for just being a tall guy that had a bad match against The Undertaker once. And every... his tights say the giant with two E's. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, how they introduced these eight competitors just it's very confusing. boggles, confusing as hell, boggles, yeah. boggles, boggles my mind. <laughs> yeah, it was El Gigante, then Vader, then Diamond Stud, then Cactus Jack, then the Steiner Brothers, then Abdullah, then Sting. And if you go by teams, it's Team 1, Team 2, Team 2, <laughs> Team 2, Team 1, Team 1 with the Steiner Brothers, Team 2, and then Team 1. Yeah. And and it's all the same music. They're all coming out with the same music until Sting. Cause yeah. Because Sting Sting's is the, the only Sting's important the person in this match, I yeah. guess. Yeah, Sting is the guy, clearly. Yeah. So the match begins. Um, so people are brawling inside and outside of the cage. Also, Mick Foley comes out with, like, the classic, I have a chainsaw, but there's no chain on it. <laughs> yep, yeah. And then, like, in the beginning of the match, after Sting whips Mick Foley into the cage, uh, Rick Steiner picks up the chainsaw like he's going to use it. And then I think he realizes, like, A, there's no chain, and B, what the fuck was I going to do with this anyway? And just immediately <laughs> drops it. <laughs> Quickly after this uh, is the debut of the Refer Eye Camera. Which oh, uh, God. JR is oh, very gosh. excited about. WCW it. has a claim to GoPro before GoPro was a thing. This is a GoPro. It Pretty is, much. but like when I saw this, I I just wanted to disappear from the face of the earth. <laughs> I wanted I I wanted Jesus to come back to Earth at that point <laughs> and take me to heaven because the Earth is terrible and I don't want to be here anymore. Also, the first thing we really see with the referee is just like 
Son of Havoc coming out of a freaking casket for no apparent reason that they never uh, described. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is Son of Havoc. <laughs> There's just like four caskets around the ring, and I guess one of them, or maybe multi- like it's unclear because this whole match is unclear, but those are there too, I guess. Uh, here's here's a, uh, a pro strat for you. Do not try to surprise Scott Steiner. <laughs> he will not take it well. <laughs> that was a bad decision on random jobber dude. I don't know what the idea behind this guy was, but he just caught popped out of the casket and immediately got beat up, and he was just getting beat up the entire match. Like no idea what the idea behind him was. Maybe yeah. they were like really into Legends of the Hidden Temple and like the Temple Guards, and they <laughs> thought this match needed that. Oh yeah, <laughs> so someone's watching. Oh, maybe that's where the inspiration for this all came from. Nickelodeon uh, game shows like that. It it feels like Nickelodeon this match. Like that's that's all they needed was to add another person to this confusing mess. <laughs> Speaking of Adam adding random stuff to this confusing match, the chair of torture is lowered. By the way, there is a chair of torture and it's also in another cage. Yo dog, I heard you like cages, so we put a cage in this cage. It kind of just decides now's the time to come down. It just descends, man. The, yeah. the chair of torture decided it was time. And again, God bless Cactus Jack. He like, for whatever reason, like falls down underneath it while it's lowering. <laughs> yeah. That's that's where he got DDT'd off of uh, Steiner's <laughs> shoulders. And he landed there and they were intending to crush him with it. But uh-huh. he rolled out just in time. Yeah, because it's moving at like Austin <laughs> Powers steamroller speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right before that happened, I did want to point out, because Vader is awesome, he got clotheslined out of the ring by uh, uh-huh. Sting, and he took uh, just the perfect back bump out of the ring over the top rope. For being as big as he is, and this far into his career as he was, it looked so good. He's so smooth. Yeah. St- Sting's just beating up Vader, and he's doing really cool stuff to Vader and, and Cactus, like you said. Yeah, like at some point, he's fighting Cactus on the outside, and he like does a teardrop shot of a casket lid onto seed like onto fucking yes. cactus jack's head yeah that was cool he got some hang time on that thing yeah and it makes like a hilarious funk and, oh, it's my God. like yeah <laughs> it, and like it hurt it probably hurt him a lot but i laughed out loud <laughs> uh at, at some point in this match uh, uh ghouls came out to the ring with a stretcher for no reason uh, yeah. Tony Schiavone on commentary just casually says, "What are these, the ghouls?" <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you tell me, Tony. Hospital orderly druids. <laughs> yeah, there's so many of them too. This, I mean, th- this whole match is. Why are they doing this? <laughs> <sighs> Scott Steiner hits Cactus Jack so fucking hard with a stick oh at some point God. in this match. Oh yeah. Triple team a guy to get him into that chair and getting strapped down. Wow! He broke it. Cactus Jack has been lacerated very deeply. This stick shot, like, Steiner was hitting, I think it was, what do I have here? Yeah, he was hitting Vader with this stick right beforehand, and it looked like, you know, like, worked stick shots. And then for whatever reason, he just, like, sees Mick Foley outside of the ring, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to kill this man. Because he's probably like, yeah, <laughs> Foley will take it. He'll be cool with it. I can hit him as hard Co- as I want. He's not going to care. Foley just got hit with a casket lid. He don't give a fuck. I can do like, anything to oh, this poor man. He just kills him with it. Yeah. And this was right before uh, Sting just like launches Cactus Jack outside of the ring into the cage. Cactus is flying. The dude is out of his mind in this mm-hmm. match. Like, it's just insane to watch. And throughout the match, they're like just randomly scaling the cage you'll notice <laughs> not for any particular reason that i can discern like they're not near the lever the fatal lever they're not <laughs> there's no escape stipulation to this match for some reason these guys are just scaling and they're climbing after each other and they're just trying to bounce each other's heads off the cage makes no sense but at some point from the hard camera you see like rick steiner climbing like on the opposite end of the cage and he looks around and he's like well nobody's uh and he just kind of jumps Onto the ring apron from there. Uh-huh. So you just like had the most convoluted way to get into the ring. <laughs> well, it's like if you're a pro wrestler and you're around a cage, you just have to climb it yeah. no matter what. 
This match is like if I ever did a like Hell in a Cell match in like a 2K game and I just put all the CPU on. Like nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. They're just climbing uh-huh. things randomly. It's like the unspoken rule if you uh, play one of those games with your friends. Like, okay, we're getting to the top of this gauge immediately. So uh, the whole point of this match is for the uh, fatal lever to be eventually pulled uh, while somebody is sitting in the chair in the middle of the ring. All right. This is, chair you know. Porter. Every, 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 excuse me, the chair of torture. This all makes, I guess, kind of sense, except the problem is the switch, the lever keeps all always like falling down by itself throughout the entire match. So like people have to like climb up onto the cage and reset the switch throughout the yeah. entire match. Like it, it, it's caught on camera like several times throughout the match. Yeah. yeah. The first time they cut to the switch with the camera, it's it's down. It's already down. <laughs> and, and basically... Like, Cactus Jack McFoley just has to stay by the switch for most of the match once the once the chair of torture is dropped. Like, there's a part where Abdullah is stabbing Sting with a spike, and you can see the, rife, the ref climbing up to fix it the first time. He does it, like, three times in total. Like, I don't know how you fix this prop. Like, I, my brain is just completely gone. Like, there's... How do you even get to this point in a wrestling match? Mm-hmm. You you think building this cage probably there's probably at least five people involved with building this cage, right? You would think one of them would try to figure out this switch problem. Just put a rope Nobody on it taped or it? a bungee cord or t- tape it. Something. WCW, everybody. All right. The Where finish. Are we at this? The the finish of the match is coming up. All right, so. <sighs> God, I need a fucking whiteboard here to explain everything about this finish. Rick it's like Steiner's the JFK assassination. <laughs> <laughs> the finish. The finish starts with Rick Steiner in the chair and Abdullah putting him in the chair with Cactus Jack next to the uh, uh, lever of doom. What's the lever called? Fatal lever. The fatal lever. All right. Yeah. So good to go. You can pull the lever now. Everybody be happy. Go home. But no, that doesn't happen. Rick Steiner reverses. Somehow does like a belly-to-belly suplex on Abdullah the Butcher into the chair. Very then, impressive, <laughs> considering Abdullah's size. And then he's yes. he's like slowly strapping Abdullah the Butcher into this chair. Cactus Jack, by the way, still by the lever. He hasn't pulled it yet. He's staring into the crowd for some no, reason. No, he's staring at the ring, so he's seeing everything that's happening. Yeah, he is. He, he's, <laughs> uh, it's, uh... He needs to know when to pull it. <laughs> yeah. But not when his teammate is in the friggin' chair. Yeah. No, no I mean, Mick Foley needs to know when to pull. <laughs> yeah, by the, w- by the way, there's teams. Uh, Cactus Jack and Abdullah's on the same team, by the way. If you forgot that, I don't blame you, because everybody else in the world's probably forgotten about it at this point. What are you uh, talking about? It was so obvious. In the beginning, it's team one, team two, team two, team two, no, team one, no. team one, team two, team one. Why is that so hard? Okay. Uh, he straps Abdullah to the chair. Cactus eventually finally decides to pull this lever, and Abdullah's getting uh, electrocuted in the ring. Yeah, he's, he's just being, being rendered murdered. helpless. There are fireworks. <laughs> yeah, it and, was like crazy sparkly fireworks going off like around him, and smoke everywhere. Yeah, the, the ring mat catches on fire. Yeah, it's there's like just one cool. firework that goes straight oh. into the crowd. And Abdullah's selling it like he's actually being electrocuted. Uh-huh. It's so good. It's so good. You've seen this gift before. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've seen this gift before at some point. Okay, but... Okay, so... This is wrestling. And they knew... This is that Abdul- wrestling. That's what the crowd should have been chanting. Yes. At the end of this match, just wrestling appears on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they knew Abdullah's going to get shocked in this chair. And when Abdul is sitting in the chair, the crown doesn't even reach his head. Uh huh. <laughs> and yet somehow he's being electrocuted. Yeah. So logistics aren't WCW strong suit. They should have fit it. They should have measured. They should have put maybe two percent of effort in this match. <sighs> Alas, they did not. Well, it was the first time they did this type of match. I mean, the next time they do it, they're gonna have way more experience. Oh uh, yeah, what's they're gonna that? have something to draw upon. They're going to be able to correct their mistakes. What? And I think it'll turn out to be even better than this one. Post-match stuff, Abdullah wakes up and starts attacking everyone. 
That does happen. Oh. I, we don't have to talk about it anymore. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he attacks Cactus Jack, who is on his team, but inadvertently electrocuted him to death. So he attacks him. He uh, goes out to the ring. He attacks the uh, uh. the ghouls or the orderlies that were supposed to be stretching his uh, supposed dead corpse out uh, to the yeah. Back like he area. doesn't. He's not even sure if Cactus is on his team anymore. Yeah. And then we get Dracula Bischoff. So I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, seeing uh, Bischoff in full Dracula makeup is pretty good. He's a master of costumes, Eric Bischoff. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So good. So much fun. <laughs> All right. Mm. It's time to bring up this list. I feel like uh, one of us is going to be heartbroken in a little bit. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think it'll uh, end up where it belongs. <laughs> I think it's number 10. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This All is right. the so worst let's... match ever. No, 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 no. It is not below Yano uh, and Izuka versus Gracie's. These men know their wrestling. These are some of the greatest wrestlers in terms of like their time frame. I, I will yeah. say, like, did we see any? Of it would have helped if we had seen them be great wrestlers in the Cactus match. Jack. We saw we did Cactus Jack. We saw Cactus Jack bumping like crazy around the ring. We saw Sting throw an awesome drop kick. Clothesline Vader that one time. And if I'm honest, like I found great entertainment in just watching that switch halfway through. Like I stopped like the second they cut to the switch and it's just down, I stopped paying attention to anything and I was just (laughs) keeping an eye on that switch. And just like every time like Cactus just barely bumped the cage and it would go down, I was filled with glee, (laughs) which is more than I can say about any part of the horrible Gracie's match. I think this match is better than the Gracie's match. Thank you. But, Agreed. Yeah. This is the new number eight match. All right. Now what's next? Let's see. Undertaker versus Kane. Inferno match. Another. Ain't better than that. Another it's not better inter- than that. Another interesting uh, first time match uh, in, ter- in terms of a gimmick match. That was the first time they did it in Inferno match. And this is the first and only Chamber of Horrors match. And, you know. I think, given the complexity of each, they did a better job with the Chamber of Horrors because they had to manage this this chair of torture descending from the rafters. They had to manage this uh, person coming out of the casket to attack the Steiners and then subsequently get beaten up and handcuffed. And they had to um, deal with the logistics of this switch being up or down. Very complicated. And Tiger uh, had to deal with the <laughs> logistics of literal fire. Yeah. Yeah. There's See, fire in this. The, ma- the, the ring caught on fire. See, they had pyrotechnics. They had so much going on here. Was was yeah. there any was there any magic in this match in the Chamber of Horrors match? The whole no. match was magic. Are you kidding me? There was no magic. <laughs> this at had to all. go through. This had to go through a committee of people. And people had to construct this thing. All eight of these giant the, uh, famous wrestlers had to agree to do it. That is magic. Getting this thing together. The in, in the Inferno match, the Fire DJ had the fire under control. In this match, the pyro and the fire was out of control. And you want that, and you want that level of uh, unpredictability in a match like this. It keeps the, it interesting. The one thing that had to go right is the switch being thrown at the correct time. <laughs> the fatal level. Yeah, like, can you imagine if, like, in the that Inferno match, the fire happen. just went out? The fire in the Inferno match was under control and did everything it needed to exactly when it was needed to be done. When yeah, he has anyway. to make appearances. So this match isn't better than an Inferno. So anyway, match. so all no. right, we discussed seven. So how about WLC now? Um, <laughs> no. Nope. What? WLC. I'm able to. I'll concede a little bit with uh, this no, match Chris. Is, is this is number eight. Match. That's it. You are not going to filibuster this up any higher than number eight. I'm sorry. Number you can eight. You tell me four wrestling moves I, that happened in this match. I just got. I just got Steiner screwdriver by Owen right there. <laughs> There was a Steiner line. There was a Steiner line in the match. Rick Steiner lined Vader outside of the ring. Uh, when Sting threw the casket lid in the air and hit Mick Foley, that was pretty good. That's not a move. <laughs> <laughs> it's just throwing stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. Um, with protest, I will concede the argument. Uh, it is the eight best smash ever, uh, which is uh, a little it's bit not better the worst. than I thought I would do. Yeah, it's not the worst. Yeah. So I'm, I guess I'm happy with that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for checking us out and watching this video or listening to the podcast. 
Please be sure to check us out over on bestmatchever.com. You'll see all of the videos and podcasts posted there. Uh, also, check us out on Twitter. Our uh, username is going to be at best underscore match underscore ever. And we'll see you next time on The Best Match Ever. Best Match Ever.